All right, guys, we're gonna take a closer look. I mean, I feel like I already covered most things on the unboxing video, so I feel redundant doing this. But this is the Islander Urban Gentry collaboration, the ISL 226 Rangemaster Mechanical. Nice, simple packaging. Very good looking, gets the job done. That's all we need. Keeps the price down, guys. That's still a really good looking box, and uh, that's all I need. Because the price on this is only 320 bucks. Um, honestly, if it would have been any more than that, I probably wouldn't have picked it up because, quite frankly, I'm not going to wear this watch. I just wanted to pick it up so I could show it to you guys and video it and take a look at it myself. You know, I'm an OG in this uh, the watch enthusiast game. I kind of grew up uh, in the in the watch community. Uh, you know, following Tristano, TGV, and Mark at uh, Long Island Watch. I've talked to him long before, uh, both of those guys, long before I even started my channel. So they're, you know, uh, part of the inspirational side of things within the community. So it's if, if I can contribute to a little bit of their success, then I'm on board. Let's talk about the watch, shall we? I think that's important to recognize though when we talk about the watch because whether you're new into the hobby today and you're looking at this and you're like wow this is really cool or you've been doing this for you know six seven years and you know you've been following it along or any phase within that realm it's uh it's important to recognize some of the leaders in the community and they are both that so that's all i have to say on that all right let's zoom in and take a closer look at this guy there's also a few things, and they pointed it out, and the, I say they, Mark and Tristano, they pointed it out in their video, but uh, I'm going to point it out again. And then there might be a few things that I noticed that uh, I would like to point out. So, first of all, very clean, balanced dial. Very clean, legible handset. Very, like, Tudor Ranger-ish. I don't know if it's uh, pulling in inspiration from anything else, but definitely more of an explorer type watch or a range master. So the case is 37 millimeter wide. The lug to lug is a 45.5. You can see the case design here, basically very similar to this Hamilton I'm gonna show you in a little bit. But this is, as far as I can tell, this does not look like a bezel that's pressed onto the case. I believe that's part of the case structure and then the crystal's pressed directly onto that. It's a slightly chamfered and then flat sapphire crystal. And then you also have a sapphire on the back. Thickness, I measure at 9.7 millimeter. You, you can clearly see the signed crown. The crown is six millimeter and the lug width is 20 millimeter. So you could obviously put a ton of different straps for this watch to wear it comfortably and uh, style it however you want. There's only a thousand of these. This happens to be, and they are numbered, thankfully. That's a proper way to do a limited edition. This is number 586 of a thousand. They did sell out. I've been watching it because a thousand is quite a few watches. The previous uh, collaboration they did, there was 500, and people screamed, 500 is not enough. A thousand must be enough, and I believe it is. I think most people that wanted it was were able to get one, uh, but it did sell out. In seven days, thousand watches, which is a good thing, because even though the price is only three hundred and twenty dollars, there's enough room left in there for those two gentlemen to be very generous, and also do a seventy five hundred dollars, seven thousand five hundred dollars to a St. Jude's um, Hospital donation, and then a seventy five hundred dollar um, donation to the Winter Center for Autism, which is, I mean, that's fifteen thousand dollars, guys, right there, boom. Just like that. So um, pretty dang awesome if you ask me. The loom on this is going to be C3. We'll take a look at that at the very end. But I want to look at this guy a little bit. And Mark had also pointed this out. You can see a little bit of distortion in the middle there of that crystal. Guys, in the middle. Right there is the middle. Okay. Um, this is a sapphire crystal on the back. And because technically this is an automatic movement. It is an 8N24 automatic movement. Well, where's the rotor? Well, the rotor's gone. They took the rotor off. But even with taking the rotor off, there's a raised section in the center of the construction that's to push the rotor up off and get it away so it can freely spin 
just above the movement structure. Well, that also kind of came into play. They either had to make the watch thicker to give it space, or Mark, the engineer, goes, hey, and he mentioned this in his video, I thought it was super cool, can we just mill out the sapphire a little bit? So it's a little bit thinner right here, and that's to make room for that little bit. I mean, and it's super, super, it's a minute amount. Um, but it ha almost has that double domed or a single domed uh, effect of a crystal because it is just right there. So pretty dang cool. It's a gilted, uh, gold toned movement and skeletonized so you can see more of it. The other clever thing with going with a style movement is when you wind it, it has... Um, a clutch mechanism. So a lot of mechanical movements, they'll, well, you can either overwind them, some of them, and damage it, but some of them will just have like a stop. As long as you're not being a Neanderthal and trying to overpower it, it should stop. And that's how these Hamiltons work. So if we take a closer look at the Hamilton, you can see similar case construction, but then also I want to point out the way the movement sounds when you wind it. So that's a traditional mechanical movement versus an automatic utilized as a mechanical. And each movement's going to sound a little bit different uh, when you start playing around with them like that. Um, here they are side by side. You can see the disparity. Uh, the size is very close in the case width, this one being 38, this one being 37. But the lug to lug on the Hamilton's a little bit longer, which is going to make it... I, I was kind of like trying to hold it at the lug so you can see it. But um, it makes the Hamilton a little bit more wearable for me. Now, this one with a shorter lug to lug, I would definitely, if like if I put it on this leather uh, NATO style strap, it would push out the lug to lug feel. So then I would be able to wear it. Um, it's just too short for my preference. Um, so it's, you know, if I were to throw it on a bun strap or, um, you know, a bulkier NATO style strap or something like that, then it would wear better for me. But I will do a wrist shot. So we can take a look. Uh, this strap is also not my favorite. It's not my taste, but it does match the watch good. But you can, I mean, it looks fine on my wrist. The strap, once it breaks in, it wouldn't show like the fat of my wrist as bad. But you can see there it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. Totally doable. I just prefer a little bit longer lug to lug. Now, it's been under the studio lights. I don't even need, I don't even need to give it a blast with the UV light. We're just going to turn off the studio lights and check the loom. The loom is fantastic on this. I think I covered everything. If not, oh well, whatever. There's other videos out there on there. Uh, but incredible loom, and they loomed the 24-hour track, as well as the Islander logo. Um, it's a non-screw-down crown. And they loomed the Urban Gentry crest. Super cool, classy, timeless design. If you didn't get one... I'm sh there's a thousand of them out there, guys. They're going to pop up on the secondary market. Probably going to pay more than $320, though. So that's just the way it goes. Uh, good luck. If you wanted one, you should be able to find one. Just pay a little bit of a premium. Snap it up. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next vid.